So welcome, Olivier, to the AHIF YouTube channel. You've just come off stage uh, talking about the, the shape of the industry. So uh, if you'd start by telling us a little bit about Forward Keys, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Um, Forward Key was born because um, there is a, a, a fundamental issue in the industry, at least challenge, which is about understanding traveler trends. That's useful. And it's been, it's been addressed very much within the airline industry, obviously, because that's their bread and butter. But at the end of the day, the, the business around the notion of a traveler, where he's traveling from, where he's going to, how that varies with previous, how long he's staying, and so forth, is very important for many businesses. Mm -hmm. Hotels, obviously, that's why I'm very pleased to be here and have been invited by HF. But also, uh, you know, it really goes from airports to tourism boards and, and, and lots of businesses that, uh, in this new era at the end of the day, wants to make sure that they have data to back up whatever decision they're making, you know, their strategy and the, the, their tactical decision short term. So that's really what we do. Great. So today you talked about the impact of Ebola on the African tourism market and the aviation market. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the findings from your study? Yeah, absolutely. And coming here in, in, in uh, Addis, uh, with the purpose here being a hotel investment uh, in Africa, uh, we wanted to um, uh, kind of make a status of what's happening in terms of uh, inflows, you know, uh, of, of, of traveler within Africa. And what our data is saying, uh, we've been saying for some time actually, is that the um, uh, importance of Ebola as a, uh, a factor of uh, deterioration of travelers inbound Africa has been extremely important. And what people do not typically know is that the negative effects of, of Ebola, first of all, has been going until the months of August. Mm -hmm. And the good news is that that's now behind us. And also that we've witnessed a, a, a ripple effect throughout Africa. In other words, Ebola has impacted every single nation of Africa in terms of incoming traveler, and specifically if you're talking about the leisure and the business crowd. Okay. And one takeaway for me was the stunning fact that you mentioned that 15% of the population of the world lives in Africa, yet it accounts for less than 3% of the aviation market worldwide. So do you think this gap will close or do you think it will widen? And what do you think needs to be done to, uh, to address that? Yeah. I look at it as an offer and demand kind of thing, because when you look at the market like this, obviously, you know, it's a half empty glass of half full glass, you know. And, but, but when you speak to the professional, specifically airlines, uh, they're struggling with a number of barriers, barriers that are preventing them from developing faster, specifically intra-African. Intra yeah. And these barriers are still there. They require investment, they require better airport, they require faster and an easier visa uh, constraint. Uh, and all these things are not in place right now, right? So for me, it's a good news that travel into Africa and within Africa is getting much better. But the best, uh, you know, the, the hockey stick we would all be, uh, you know, dreaming for for Africa are not happening yet. And there is a major of hurdles that the industry altogether have to be, will have to be addressing, right? It's going to take a lot of years because, and that's my view, because the infrastructure is not there. But the willingness, the number of players, the money sometime, you know, and the vision uh, that has been actually expressed by a number of speakers in the conference today are there. The only question at the end of the day is how many years it will it take so that we can see this hockeystick thing happening. And what has been particularly interesting in this conference today was to be able to see the number of hotel openings that will be happening in Africa in the coming four to five years because they mean that the demand, I mean the offer in terms of, of, uh, of, uh, of hotels at least can meet the demand because the ADR is, is, is pretty high, mm. right? So my side of the picture was to say, okay, but is the, is the airline related traffic, is the air traffic matching that demand? So the offer and demand in terms of, of, of capacity uh, and, and, and bookings uh, is still to be debated. But the fact there will be more offer on the hotel side is definitely you know, one part of the, uh, of, uh, of the answer to this question. Yeah, sure. And, and as, we're in, uh, as we're in Addis, um, I just wanted to know, you know, what's your feeling on Addis itself as a city? You know, is this going to be something that develops as a hub or is it going to become a destination in its own right? And how do you see the forward trends for Addis? Yeah. Yeah, it's always bizarre when you're talking about Africa because Africa has so many different facets, you know. Um, and uh, when you look at the total numbers of, of Sub-Saharan Africa and you include South Africa into it, 
it's always a problem because that's account for 30 to 40 percent of the overall mm. business anyway, right? So it's good that we have uh, uh, countries like Ethiopia uh, and destinations like uh, like Addis and airline like Ethiopia and others that are serving the destination that are increasing and by our number up to 15 percent. Including, including up to in, in 2016, uh, uh, the, the the potential, you know, the capacity into into Addis now, and and specifically if you if you draw a line in the middle of Africa and compare Eastern Africa to Western Africa, because there's hardly any hub in Western Africa, right? So Addis is converting into a, a, a more than meaningful hub for Africa, and that's super encouraging that this is being built here, you know, beyond the usual suspect there are Dubai. Uh, or some South African destination. Now, at the end of the day, what I would wish for Addis and for Ethiopia in general is that that would lead to bring more traffic into Addis. Our data are not saying this yet. It's saying that the growth is primarily um, uh, resulting from, from the hub strategy, but the hub strategy can be super beneficial for a destination like Addis and Ethiopia in general. Because by essence, it means that if you have a company and you want to be radiating around the, the, the East Africa region, you know, South Africa, uh, for the convenience of traveling around, uh, is, might not be the only options anymore. And Addis may turn into a real good option. Absolutely. Well, I think that's uh, taken plenty of your time. Thanks so much for joining us at the uh, Africa Hotel Investment Conference. And uh, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Olivia. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.